Amen. We want to thank you so much for those who is here. And also, we want to thank you, those who is watching this broadcast. We thank you for being with us. We pray that this service this morning will be a blessing to each of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to open up in prayer in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. We thank you, Father, that you continue to guide us, direct us, Lord. And as Pastor Larry, come, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and minister in your word. We thank you, Father, by your spirit, you direct him, Lord, that he will speak with the clarity, simplicity, Lord, and Father, as your people. We thank you, Father, that we have a heart to receive revelation, knowledge, and understanding of your word and impartation into our spirit, that revelation. And we're giving you a praise. We're giving you a glory because you're the one who deserves all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen to that. Amen, amen. Well, God who we serve, he is the one who deserves all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. So before Pastor Larry come, I just wanted to share with you, remind you that even though you know you, some of you come here in person and many of you watching this broadcast online, I just want to remind you that Pastor is still have unscheduled traveling this coming year still going to Pakistan and he does have some other arrangements making because we believe for reaching our souls and we believe that God gonna continue to touch many people hallelujah amen so he is a good God he each of us will be led by his spirit amen because see the scripture says those who are the what children of god children of god are led by his spirit they will be led by the spirit of god right mm -hmm. so and those who are the children of god also we hear the voice of god so we believe that we will hear from heaven so sometimes you know probably from your own experience you sometimes like wow i don't know what the decision to make and you call on the name of the Lord and say Lord help me, guide me direct me, that's what it's about especially this last days to hear from heaven because God is always give a way to escape he's always going to open a door even you go for some challenge or whatever you're going through see when we go through some certain things enemy think well to destroy you right but whatever satan did for evil god god will turn around for his glory that that situation will be a testimony how god will turn that situations and, and it doesn't look like he can do it in a natural but see we serving god who is god of supernatural so in the natural, a lot of things is like, whoops, I don't know. Some things could be so bad in the natural. I don't know, God, how are you going to do this for your glory? But God's still going to do it. Because those who belong to him, those who is of his kingdom, God will give always, always the victory. So when God gives you the victory... Don't keep that victory for yourself. Testify. Testify what God has done. Testify of the goodness of the Lord. And many of you see what God has done. A lot of you have a testimonies. I know for me, when I'm just thinking of the goodness of the Lord, how He kept me, how He protect me, Many of you have the same testimony 
and how God kept you, how he protect you. So when you go through some difficult time, just remember, if God did it then, that he will do it again. God is a supernatural God. He will open up doors that no man, no man can close. When God has opened a door for you, supernaturally just step in. Just do this step of faith because he is able. Hallelujah, he is able. Just, you know, to have faith in God. Just have this faith in God to know that he is with you. Because, see, when we have that faith, that like God-given faith, like you connected with his faith. I mean, supernatural things can happen. That's one thing. The second thing is the obedience to the voice of the Lord. Whatever he said, maybe it doesn't, like, seems like, I don't know, this is like really, but you just do it. Because not to lean to your own understanding, but to trust him, and he is the one who directs your steps. Because we, and that scripture, you know, in book of Proverbs 3, 5 to 7, you know, to trust in the Lord with all of your heart, to lean not to your own understanding, and all of the ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So when he directs our path, you just step in. You just step in and you're walking in and to believe that God will make a way that his name will be continually glorified. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. So God is good. Pastor Larry is here, so he's going to be ministering to us. We um, also uh, believe in as a ministry. We are people of prayer. Amen? Prayer is the also a key for the victorious walk with the Lord, you know. One thing is to believe in Him, another thing follow Him, and also to walk in on a victory, because He is a one who gives us a victory. But we have to connect it with Him to have that victory. That He abide in us and we abide in Him and He and I, you know, you and Him become one. It's like united in the spirit so united in the spirit he is you know our guidance through the work of the holy spirit he will guide us he will direct us he will lead us and to be a man and woman of prayer that's a very important a prayer is what communication with god and that's how we as a people of god continue to learn to hear his voice and when we hear his voice we need to obey but if you don't know his voice how can you obey if you don't communicate with him how will you know his voice so when you love someone and we talking about the just the human relationships you know parents, children, spouses, loved ones, right? You communicate with that individuals. And some of you maybe received a phone call and, and you know, right away you know who this person is because you so know that person's voice. It's like, oh mom, I know it's you or, or child or whoever. Because you spend time with that person, you know that person's voice. This is the just the natural. But how much we need to know the voice of God. When He speaks to us. Because when He speaks to us, it's important not to just to hear, oh I know God told me that. But it's also obey what He said. But it's also the scripture, the word. When we read in the word and God speaks to us through the word, also obedience and that. That's why we have to be in the house of the Lord, be in a fellowship of the, of the believer because iron sharp irons, 
you know, sharpen the gifts and to be with each other with the other believers. Amen. So Pastor Larry is here, so he's going to minister to us. So just get ready to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm ready. Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen. We pray that we are going to say something today that's going to inspire you to be everything that God created you to be because we are in a time right now where if we don't serve God, we're going to serve the one just the opposite of God. Amen. And I don't know if you want, I don't know if that's what you, you want to be your destiny. I hope not anyway, because I used to live that way. And it wasn't fun. It might have seemed like it was fun for a little bit, but once it was all over with, you feel bad, you feel guilty, you feel like life has, had no meaning. I was so disappointed in my life, I wanted to just give up on life altogether. You ever feel that way? Just won't just give up? I've been there. And it was because of the lifestyle that I was living that caused me to want to, to do away with my life. I wanted to just do away with my life. That's not a good feeling. <laughs> That's not a good thought, you know, to think about yourself. Amen. But I thought those, I thought that way about myself. I just want to do away with my life. And I realized that. This wasn't the life that God wanted me to live. And I said, God, if you can save me, then here I am. But if you can't, then this is all life has to offer. I don't want no more. And I fell dead on the spot in that hotel room. I put a, a, a gram of cocaine in a spoon and put it in my arm. I fell dead on the spot. So you're talking, you listen to a dead man right now. But after that happened, because I had told God, I said, if, if this is all life has to offer, I don't want no more. And if you really God, and if this, you know, I said, then save me. Next thing I know, I, I was standing on my feet, and I was hearing in my spirit, I was hearing him say, even in my ears, out loud, I said, you will live and not die. You declare my word. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Jesus, thank you. He said, you will live and not die. You will yes, declare my yes. word. Amen. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost on that this morning. Amen. Amen. You know why? Because, see, sin is to do what? To take you out of this life. That's right. Yeah. It's to help. It is to turn you away from the purpose that you're really here. Mm -hmm. Amen. I better pray first before I get started because I feel the Holy Ghost in this place already. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I release my faith right now, Father, on behalf of those that are here, on behalf, on behalf of those that are with us by the internet. Father, I know that we're, there's a lot of people right now are facing situations and circumstances that they want to just give up on life. They want to just quit. They want to just throw in a towel. Father, I'm asking you right now, in the name of Jesus, that you will give us a reason to live. Give us a reason to want to live. Help us to see that sin is the destroyer of our hope, of our future, of our lives, our hearts, our souls. And help us to understand, Lord God, that you came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And now, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive, Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And Father, we covenant with you now that we're going to give you all the glory, 
all the honor and all the praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. And all that agree with that said, amen, amen, amen yes. and amen. amen. Well, God bless you all. We love you. God bless you. Welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church. And for you that are with us by the internet for the very first time, we want to encourage you to go through these series because this is a, a this is number six on this particular series. And I believe that your life will be totally transformed and changed by the power of Almighty God. Amen. And I want to encourage you that are with us by the YouTube and by Facebook. Don't take this lightly because I am sent to you as a messenger from Almighty God. I'm not just a preacher, although I am a preacher, but I'm a messenger sent to you by God for such a time as this. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord and harden not your heart. But hear the word of the Lord and take heed to what God is saying to you in this hour. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> because I tell you right now, there's a lot of people is facing situations in their life where they just want to give up on life. Amen. Where they just want to give up on life. And I know that this is not the will of God. Amen. This is not the will of God. And I want you to know that God is wanting to change your situation. He wants to transform your way of thinking. And it, it's not it's not going to happen just, just because you say, I'm a Christian. It's not going to happen just because you say, I went to church. It's going to happen when you become sincere with God. Yeah. When you come sincere with God and you say, God, I'm just tired of this lifestyle. I just know that you got, you got to have something better than what I'm doing. Amen. There must be something better than what I'm experiencing. Amen. Oh, you might, because see, I was, at, I, I, I was a Christian. I, I had accepted Jesus Christ in my heart, and I was still in the clubs. I was still in the, in the I was, I was, because I, I love the same. And I was in the club, and I was in church at the same time. Amen. On Saturday, and, on Friday and Saturday night, I was in the club singing and partying. On Sundays, I was in the church singing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that Save a Rich Like Me. Amen. You see, I didn't understand the full meaning of being a Christian. I didn't understand the meaning of being a child of God. I didn't know how to be a child of God. Why? Because I, I grew up in a in a in an atmosphere where there was no God. Amen. Although my mother went to church, but she wasn't a Christian. She just went to church just to say she went to church. I know her lifestyle. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. My sisters and brothers, they were not Christians. Well, when I got when God called me and preached, they started to get saved, but they're still having issues. So we know that God is still dealing with each of our hearts, and we have to understand when God began to deal with our heart, that means God wants us. He's trying to get our undivided attention. He's wanting to get our undivided attention. Why? Because there's a reason that you are hearing Him talking to you today. He's calling you out of darkness. He's calling you out of your lifestyle that have caused you so much rejection, pain. And he's wanting to restore you to the right position that you was created to walk in. See, when God called you, he looked at you as he looked at Adam in the Garden of Eden. He loved you so much that he wanted to bring restoration to your hearts. See, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, that was the beginning of the fall of man. That was the beginning. Amen. How do you know, Pastor? Because before Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, God used to visit them every day. He used to walk in the garden with Adam, talk with him. And Adam be, and he be asking, Adam, what would you call this right here? And Adam named everything that there is today. He the one gave it all names. Amen. Then at the end, at the end, God said, now, this tree right here, don't eat of this tree. Because the moment you eat of this tree, you're going to die. And when Eve saw this tree, he saw, she saw how good this tree looked. And it, and it appealed to be a, a good a, a, a fruit or something to eat. She disobeyed the will of God and she partook of that tree. Now, you notice when she took of the tree and ate it, nothing happened. Why? Because she wasn't the one in charge. She wasn't over man. Man was over her. Y'all understand what I just said? Now, when the man ate of the tree that God told him not to eat of, 
Look what happened. To, what happened to him, Keith? Well, the first thing they noticed was they and needed naked. clothes. They so saw themselves what? Naked. What did they see themselves? Naked, right? Why did they see themselves naked? Because they had disobeyed God, and now they begin to see themselves as they are seen. God didn't see them that way, and God don't see you that way today. God still sees you as a mighty man or a mighty woman that he can show himself strong through. See, that's why salvation is so important. That's why repentance is so important. Why? Let me tell you why it's important. Because the moment you repent, the same nature that Adam and Eve walked in before they sinned, it become a part of you. The life that Jesus lived in the earth was, was the life that Adam lived before he sinned against God. Now, when Jesus came, he came to, he came to do what? He, not, he didn't just come to, to pay the penalty for our sin. He came to demonstrate us how we should walk in this earth. He came to demonstrate how God sees us in the earth. He lived the way, because see, when Adam was born, he wasn't born because it, uh, the woman had intercourse with man. That's not why Adam was, that, was not, that, that wasn't why Jesus was born. That wasn't how Jesus was born. Jesus was born of a virgin. Now we are living, in, we are in the season right now where we're going to be celebrating his birth. This is called, what we call Christmas, is what we also consider as a, the time of Jesus' birth. Amen. And that's why we are, you see in life set where everybody's starting to feel they, they feel it in the atmosphere. They're starting to celebrate. And you know the world think you know the world think that we are, this is a blessed nation because we have good government. We don't have good government. America is blessed because of the churches of God that is serving God, that are worshiping God, that are bringing the presence of God in the earth. This is why America is blessed. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now see, this is why the devil is trying his best to shut the church up. Because if they can shut if they can shut up the church or the church people, what's going to happen? This nation will be no more than any other nation in the earth. And this is why we have to understand God is calling the what? His people right now to repentance. He's calling his people, his people right now to repentance. Why? Because our world is in trouble because of all these ungodly leaders that have taken position and are trying to push our nations and the nations of the world in the wrong direction. This is why the church is called to repentance. This is why the people of the land is called to repentance. But we don't understand. We think that we think this message is, 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 a, is harassment. This message is not harassment. This message is for your eternal soul. Glory to God. Now, I don't know how y'all understand. I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying. But you need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Amen. Because we're in, we in a time right now, we're in a season where the church of God is under heavy fire. And the people is not, a, is not aware of what's going on. They think it's all part of the game. God said it's time for us to repent. It's time for us to repent. And it's time for us to get our hearts in the right place. It's time for us to see where we are in God. And time for us to begin to apply ourselves as God has given us to apply. Now I want you to look at something because see, if God called us to repent, then he's called us to repent because he wants us to understand the teaching that he taught us from the beginning. Look at the book of uh, Matthew chapter 4. Let's start at chapter 3 first. Because we, we're going to see here that Jesus came. Now let's look at chapter 3. We're going to see what John the Baptist did first. Then we're going to look at another place and see what Jesus did. But in the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse number 13. And then came Jesus from Galilee 
unto John unto Jordan to be unto John to be what? Baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becomes up to what? To fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. Amen. In verse, and, and it goes on to say, verse number 16, And Jesus, when he was what? Baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And, the, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. See, God is saying the same thing about you and me. When we repent of our sin, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we acknowledge what he did right here, we are coming into the same re relationship with God. Now, Jesus right now is about to begin to go through the tests and the trials of life that we are experiencing today. But he understood his purpose and he didn't give in to the, to the deception. Look at verse number one, chapter four. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Notice how Jesus' identity was the first thing came under attack. When you are having, when you are been called out of dark, when you have been called to serve God, when you've been called to be a, 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 a witness or a light to the world, the first thing that's going to come under attack is your identity. Have you noticed the world today because of the government that we are under? Men and women have lost sight of their gender. Why? Because the devil is after their mind. That's the same thing that Jesus went through when he came out of the wilderness. His first thing came under attack was his mindset. If thou be the son of God, as though he had forgot who he was. Amen. And this is why this is why this is why so much this is why so many people are turned away from God today because they minds their minds came under attack and they didn't know how to defend themselves. Why? Because they are not walking by the spirit of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are walking by the spirit of Adam. And I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying today, but I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not here to play games. I'm not here to make you happy. I'm here to, to get you free. Because I need to be, I need to make sure I'm free too. Because, yeah, because I'm, you know, we, we preachers, we're still human. And don't you ever forget that. You preachers out there, don't you ever forget. Just because you're a preacher don't mean that you are without sin. God said, all men have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. You need to repent too. So God is showing us that if we are so comfortable with this lifestyle that we are living outside of Christ, then why uh, when we get sick and so forth and so on, we run to the hospital? Why are we always running to for help when, when we have a little ache or when we have a little pain? Because we're not satisfied with our life. Are you ready? You ready? Just you ready to go on already going into eternity? I tell you what, I'd rather wait until my time come. I'm not going to push myself. <laughs> I'm going to wait. Why? Why I'm going to wait? Because I have a call on my life, and that call on my life is giving me an opportunity to be like Him. To be like him. Because see, if I can be like him, that means I can walk without sin. If I can be like him, that means I can I can bring the good news to the hurting, to the wounded, to the poor, to the sick, to the lame. 
That's what Jesus taught us to do. And this is why it's so important that we, re, that, that, that we as believers begin to get our heart in the right place with God. Because see, we're coming into a season right now <clears throat> that the kingdom of God is going to be is, is going to manifest through the heart of them that truly have set their heart on him. What I mean by the kingdom of God going to manifest, you're going to walk as Christ walk. You're going to demonstrate the kingdom of God through the anointing that's going to be resting upon your life. God is calling us to see ourselves as he sees us. Remember what he said in the book of Acts in chapter, chapter 1. These, the treaties have I, let me just look at it. Let me just show you real quick. Because see, Jesus was teaching his disciples a very important lesson here in chapter 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theopolis, of all that, and this is what he said now, that Jesus began to do and to teach. Jesus was teaching the lifestyle that he was living, and he was showing them that it was possible for them to do the same thing. That's why he said in John chapter 14 and verse number 12, he said, The works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. How's that going to happen? Look at, uh, look at uh, John Gospel chapter 14, verse number, verse, number, verse number 11, verse number 10. John 14, 10. Amen. And it says, notice what he says here. Believe it God not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that, oh my God, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. See, if I'm going to do the work that Jesus did, then I got to understand who I am in him. Because if I don't see myself in him, then I will never see myself doing what Jesus did. Woo! That was a mouthful. <laughs> Because see, see, God is see God, God has given us, He's given us opportunity right now to prepare ourselves. And how do we prepare ourselves? We will repair ourselves through examining our hearts, examining our life, examining our most, what we why we do what we're doing. And He's given us the opportunity to not only to examine ourselves, but to bring ourselves into accountability with God. The Holy Spirit. If you're going to walk in the power of God in these last days, and this is what God is looking, and this is what God is wanting us to do, I, I, I'm telling you right now, this is exactly what God wants. See, God wants. See, the early church, the early church, they implemented everything that they saw Jesus do and teach. Now, that did not go un. How do you say this? Unnoticed. Well, you can say unnoticed, but mm -hmm. it did not go. It did not. It, the world, when they saw his disciples of old, they saw the same spirit that Jesus walked in. They saw the same spirit that Jesus walked in. What do you mean, Pastor? Because. When Peter and John were walking through the gate of the temple, they didn't say, come on, let's have a privilege for this poor man that's laying down here begging. No, the man sitting there asking alms. He wanted something. But Peter and John looked up on him, they fed their eyes on him, and they said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. What did they have? They had the Spirit of God in them. They didn't have to have a prayer meeting. God didn't tell them to pray for him. God told him to heal the sick. And that's what he told us to do in Luke chapter 1. Verse number 1. When he called his 12 disciples together, he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And that's what he said. And he said the same thing in Luke chapter 10, verse number 1. He called 70 more. And he gave them the same power and authority to go out and do the same thing that he told the first 12 to do. And then in verse number 17, the seven returned saying, Luke chapter 10, verse number 17. And the seven returned saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. 
How are you going to present the kingdom of God when you're afraid to stand up for righteousness? You won't stand up for righteousness if you are afraid of what people are going to say about you. I told God, I said, God, I don't have no reputation to maintain, so I'll say whatever you want me to say, and I'll go where you want me to go. Amen. That's why when, That's why uh, this in a few more months, I'm going to be headed back to Pakistan to declare the word of God. And this time, when I go, this time when I go, I'm going as a messenger of God. I'm not just going just to hold a, a, a conference or a crusade. I'm going as a messenger. I'm going to demonstrate the kingdom of God. I remember when I went over there in April, when I was over there in March and April, the last part of March, the first of April, I saw the blind, I saw the mute to talk. And that was demonstrating the kingdom of God. Amen. And, and, I, and there was many people, many people was saved. Many people was free. Many people was healed. Many people was delivered. Amen. Because we were preaching to over, over uh, six, what that? 60,000 people. Amen. There were many signs and wonders. So God is showing us that God is showing us that he has called us. Now notice what he said in John chapter, John chapter 14, verse number 10 again. Believe it not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. You got to see yourself with the Father dwelling in you. You got to see yourself with Jesus, the nature of the life of Christ dwelling you. How do you get that nature? What happened to, for you to get that nature? How do you how do you know you got it? When you said, Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Did you have a, did you have a, you know, when I said that, I remember when I said it. It was, it was in, it was, it was in Alabama when I said it. Amen. I had just come home out of the military. 1982. Amen. September. Amen. I was, I had got me a job working at a gas station. And uh, shortly after I got to work, started working there, this preacher come visit me, want to buy some gas, they want to start a conversation, want to witness to me. And then I found out that he was pastoring this church that my family goes to. And he said, why don't you come down and visit? I said, okay, I don't, I don't have no problem with that. So I went down and visited the church. The following Sunday after he had asked me to come visit. And I gave my heart to the Lord. But I didn't know what I was doing because I didn't have no Bible training, didn't have no no learning, amen, of the Bible, didn't know no scripture, amen. I just, he said, if you want to ask Jesus to come in your heart, come up to the front or raise your hand, or whatever the way they did it, amen. And, uh, and, and we said the sinner's prayer. But I went back to living my old lifestyle. Why? Because I had no Bible training. I didn't know. I didn't have no understanding of what I'm supposed to do as a child of God. And this is why so many people are falling back away from God because they don't know what to do. They don't know how God they're supposed to live. They don't know that they're supposed to, to study the Word of God. They don't know that they're supposed to start praying. They don't know that they're supposed to start seeking the face of God. They don't understand it. And this is why so many are falling away from God. Because when they start to learn about God, they come under attack and they don't have no one to encourage them not to give up. That's what happened with me. Because see, I was born in I was born I was born again as a permanent Baptist, you know. Permanent Baptist. Yeah. I was a permanent Baptist. They they permanent too. <laughs> Amen. But now, but now when I got, but when I started reading the Bible myself, I saw there was more in the Word of God than what I was learning. And they said, stay away from them Pentecostal people. And, I, and when they started telling me that, I wanted to know why. You know what somebody tell you not to do something? You want to, you want to, you want to know why? Yes. I wanted to know why that I need to stay away from them. And so I began to, I began to hang around them a little bit. The next thing you know, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. What do you mean filled the Holy Ghost? I received the power to walk like Christ. I received the fire of God to, to operate in the world, in the earth like Christ did. And then that, that, uh, about a week or two after that, I was invited to preach one Sunday morning. And I started preaching. 
And boy, the presence of God came in that Baptist church like I had never seen before. And the whole church began to cry. Everybody in the church began to cry. They, the power of God was so strong, convicting of their sin. Needless to say, that was my last time preaching in that church. They kicked me out. That's when I started going to the rest home. I started going to the prisons. I started going to the jailhouses. And I started having tent revivals on the street. And I started seeing the power of God like I've never seen before. I mean, the place that I used to set my tent up every month, every, every year, they have put a church on that very spot that I used to set my tent up. In the middle of, down, in the middle of downtown. In the rough area of town. In Decatur, Alabama. On Moulton Street. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> right? Bes and, and, and get this. Get this. There's a... a is that by the... Now, the funeral was up enough, a little bit further from there. <laughs> but it was crazy. It was crazy. Amen. And I was out there preaching. And I was out there preaching. There was a lawyer came out there. And he got... He, the lawyer got saved. And he said, "I want to." He said, "I want to. I, I want to sow a seed. Do you? Do you? Are you set up for? A, a, are you set up for a nonprofit?" I said, "No, I'm not set up for that." He said, "I'm going to give you a seed." He sold five hundred dollars, and then he set my ministry up as nonprofit. He said, "Get me all your information. I I help you get set up as a nonprofit," and that costs a lot of money. But it didn't cost me nothing. Because God touched this man hard. He got saved. And he wanted to be a blessing to my ministry. Whew. That was powerful. See, when you begin to walk in the presence of God, when you begin to walk in the spirit of God, not only are you going to be changed, but when people come into your presence, they're going to feel God's presence. And they're going to, they're going to be changed too because of your heart. Because of your condition, because you have surrendered. Now, that spirit that you are now walking in is the same spirit that Jesus walked in. People come around you, all of a sudden, they, they start feeling convicted. They want to do something to help you. Then they're going to start repenting. Lives going to start changing. When God started changing my life, I got kicked out of the house. I became homeless. When God changed my heart, I got homeless because I started preaching to everyone that I loved. My family, my mother, my sisters, my brothers, and the people that hung around them. And mama, I come home one day from work. And my clothes and everything, my bed and everything was in two big black garbage bags sitting on the back porch. She said, son, I love you, but you can't stay here no more. You got to go. And I said, where am I going? She said, I, I don't know, but you can't stay here no more. So I became homeless. And I, and I drove my car to the, to the city, Decatur, Alabama, and I bagged my car off into the park and when it got dark, the police came to run me out. Because they said, after 8 o'clock, no one's allowed here. It's a curse few hours. They ran me out. I said, Lord, what am I going to do now? So I drove my car back down into the country where I'm from, around by the cotton fields, and I bagged my car off into the woods. And I laid up on the hood of my car that night, and I was so mad at God, I would point my finger toward heaven. I said, God, look at you. What you have done to me? You called me to preach. And I've been preaching to my family and preaching to everybody around me. Now I've been kicked out. I don't have no place to go, no place to stay. I'm homeless. I'm sleeping in my car, God. What is this? Why do you do me like this? I'm, for, I'm pointing my finger toward heaven. God, what are you? And, and you know what God said to me? He didn't get mad at me. He talked to me just as calm. He said, this is exactly what he said to me. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. 
when he said that, I said, okay, God, I'll be holy. Just give me a place to stay. He said, look across the field. <laughs> See, when you start, when you start, when you start yielding to God's purpose, when you start yielding to God's plan, God will start making a way for you out of no way. God starts showing up. He'll, I mean, if you don't have a place to stay, God will give you a place to stay. And then he'll give you someone to pay the rent and turn the lights on until you're able to do it yourself. That's what he did for me. Then I, I got the, I, I seen that house across the way. He said, that's where you're going to live. And they had grass growing up all up the side of the house, almost halfway tall as the house. And the house inside was all trashed out. And there was no running water in the house, no no, no, no plumbing in the house. Hey Amen. My, my, my bathroom was the outside. My well was on the outside. I had to draw my water. And this was in the 20s. In, 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 in 1980, 1982. In Alabama. Still didn't have plumbing in certain areas. And God said, that's where you're going to live. That was the most humbling place I've ever been. And while I'm staying in this house... That's when God spoke to me because I was so sick. I was so hurting. And this is what God spoke to me. This is when God spoke to me. He's, because I, I was crying. God, I need help. I need Because when I go preach, when I was preaching, I was holding my stomach while I was preaching. Just like this right here. And holding my Bible on it and holding my stomach on it. Because I was in so much pain. And God, I said, God, and I was laying in my bed crying. I said, God, I need help. I need help. I need help. And God said, get up and read your Bible. I got up and I started reading my Bible because I ran to the door first because I thought someone was messing with me, but I didn't find anyone there. And then I, so I went back and I started reading my Bible and I, and I got to the book of Mark chapter 16 and those words started jumping off the page, started jumping off the page and all of a sudden I understood what God was saying and I, my body became, I, I began to walk in divine health that day. Because God healed my body, and I've been teaching it ever since. And this is why, this is why Jesus came. Amen. What did he do when he came? Look at Luke chapter. No, look at Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about what? Doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And then in Luke chapter 4, verse number 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, now I'm talking about me now, he has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach the living to the captain, recovering of sight to the blind, to set and lift to them that are bruised. See, I've been called to do the same thing Jesus was called to do in Acts chapter 10. So have you. This is why God's called us to repentance. It's time for us to begin to demonstrate the kingdom of God in the earth. How are we going to do it if we don't uh, re uh, allow his nature to, to rest upon us and to flow through us? And the only way that's going to happen is that we acknowledge, God, I, I need your help. I need, I'm need. i having problems with these areas in my life. And, and I know that you're not pleased with it. And I know sin separates me from you. Except we separate because of sin. God, help me in this area. You start crying out in that area that you have problems in, you're going to find out that the God that loved you so much that he sent his son to give his life for you, you're going to find out that that same God that have turned his back on you is going to start giving you a understanding on how to overcome that area in your life. I'm telling you now, because see, God wants to do something in the church today. God wants to bring the church into a manifestation of walking in the kingdom of God, in other words, walking in His presence, and He's not going to do it until you surrender. And when you surrender, you're going to experience the presence of God like you never experienced before, and it's going to be life changing. It's going to be life changing. Amen. You see, you can face your every battle knowing that you're going to win because you're not a loser. If you were a loser, you wouldn't be in here. And if you were a loser, you wouldn't be watching me on television right now, on, te on, on the internet right now. Amen. When you begin to understand how much God loves you and what he gave up for you. See, when I begin to, when I saw that, when I, when I began to understand that, I, I, I started, I started, I started 
walk around every day practicing walking in his presence. When I saw what he did for me, I used I, I was I used to fast every week, two days a week. Every week I was fasting, two days a week. And sometimes I fasted three days a week. When I went to my mother's house before she kicked me out, I had just come off a three-day fast. <laughs> I walked to my mother's house and all the people sitting around the table drinking their drink and smoking their dope and smoking their cigarettes and everything. And I walked in the house, they said, them people sitting at the table, who invited this so-and-so preacher to come here right now? And before they could get it out of their mouth, the Spirit of God rose up on the inside of me and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind this demonic spirit. I bind this demon spirit. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Then they start saying, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. He knows something. See, when you understand who you are, you have the authority that Jesus walked in in the earth. You have the power that Jesus walked in in the earth working in you. You see, there's a powerful force on the inside of you that you're not even allowing to come to be seen in the earth because you are afraid to allow him to have access through this flesh. Woo! Glory to God. <clears throat> why, I'm, why, why I put it like that? Because you see, Jesus, he said, be ye in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1. Be ye, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. What, was he, what does that mean to you? Well, what it means to me is that I'm supposed to imitate Jesus as I would imitate my father. Now, I'm not talking about my heaven father, I'm talking about my earthly father. As I would imitate my earthly father, I'm supposed to imitate Jesus the same way. He's, because that word follow means to imitate. Imitate. To me, that's what it means. It might mean something else to you, but to me it means to imitate. And so, and so I, when, I, when, I, when I see that, when I receive it that way, now I, my heart is set now, my heart is set on practicing his presence. And so when I would go to work, when I would go to work, and, and, and I would I would sit down at lunchtime and I would read my Bible. Uh, sometimes I would uh, see these little I had these little booklets right here. I would sit down and I would read these scriptures over my life. Cause see, this is a confession book. Amen. And I would confess this over my life. I still do this. I still do this. Amen. I still confess these over my life. Because it's, it has a very it has a very powerful impact in my spirit. That I am the body of Christ, and Satan has no power over me. If I overcome evil with good, I am of God, and I've overcome Satan. Because great is He that is in me, and He that is in the world. I will fear no evil, for Thou with me, Lord. Your word and Your spirit they comfort me. I am far from oppression, and fears does not come nigh me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. For my righteousness is of the Lord. But whatever I do will prosper. For I'm like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. I'm delivered from the evil of this present world. For it is the will of God. See, I began to I began to speak these over my life daily. Two and three times a day. And I still do. I can, I can, I don't need this to say these scriptures now. I can just see them right out of my spirit right now. Amen. But that's but that's how I got there. I came to that point by, by doing it daily. Amen. And then when, when the enemy come against me, I don't have to try to figure out what I'm gonna say because on the inside of me, my spirit already knows what it's gonna say. Why? Because I have applied myself. His nature, his spirit is abiding in me. Now, I can allow him to continue to lie dormant or I can allow him to have his way in me and through me. The same with you. Now, let's look again here in verse number 11, John chapter 14, verse number 11. He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
Verse number 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. Amen. I will do it. Look at verse number 16. And I will pray to Father, he shall what? Give you another comforter that he may abide with you. How long? Forever. See, the Holy Spirit is in you forever. For whole, your, your whole lifespan. Amen. He's with you and he's in you. And he's not going to leave you. He's not going to depart from you. He's wanting to, he's wanting you to, to begin to communicate. He wants you to begin to spend time with him. He wants you to begin to use your prayer language. Amen. Those of you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, he wants you to begin to use your prayer language and talk to him. I tell you what, I just I, I've been doing this so much recently, and I can see the difference. Of, I can see the difference in my delivering of the message now. Amen. You know why? Because I'm I, I'm getting back. I'm coming. What he said, come back to you. I'm coming back to my first love. The one. See, I didn't come looking for him when I was in sin. He came looking for me when I was in sin. You understand what I just said? Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I, I wasn't so happy. I, was, I wasn't so happy what I was doing that, that, that I enjoyed what I was doing. When I was out there doing what I was doing, he came looking for me. Yes. <laughs> and what I did when he came looking for me, I, I, I turned and paid attention to him. I, I said, okay, I, I, you know, you know I, I, just, I just yielded to him. Amen. And then, look at Isaiah chapter 6. Look at Isaiah chapter 6. It just dropped it in my spirit. So let's look at it. Because when, when God began to deal with my heart, he dealt with my heart right here first. After a while, and when I started to understand what he was doing, he began to deal with my heart right here in, in Isaiah chapter 6. Because when I repented, he started to show me things. Verse number 1 said, In the year that King Uzzah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up. See, there's a lot of things that's in our life that is keeping us from seeing God. And we don't understand why is there but we understand that it's the enemy, that it's the author of it being there. And so we see here to see he had a, he had a ooze on his life. What is it that's in your life that keeps you from seeing God? What is it that you are facing every day that is trying to keep you from the reality of God's presence? Verse number two said, Above it stood the seraphim, each one had six wings. With twin he covered his face, with twin he covered his feet, and with twin he did fly. And one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Right in verse number five, very important. Because see, you need to see yourself. As God see you. See, this is what happened verse number five. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Unless you thank you, unless you see yourself undone, you'll never ask God for help. Unless you see yourself undone, you'll never yield to total freedom from your sin. Then said I, Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean, for I'm a man. For I am undone. What I mean, and I'm a man of unclean lips. Now, at this point, I was just like my brother, my sisters, and my mother, and everybody else around me. I cursed every other word came out of my mouth. I had an unclean mouth. Every word come out of my mouth was cussing. And I'm a, and I live in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And I lived, that's, that's what my, that's what my family, I lived around people like that. Amen. But now my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Now my eyes have become open to who I am as a child of God. Amen. Now look at verse number six. 
Then flee one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from the altar. Now, what happened? The Holy Ghost, see that I'm yielded to him. So now he's sending me help. The angel of the seraphim, he's coming with the live coal from off the altar, the blazing altar, and he's taking that hot coal with a pair of tongs, and he does what with it? He places it upon my mouth. Look what it says, verse number seven. And the Lord laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips and thy iniquity. See, this is why a lot of us is, is still walking in, in sin because we have so much iniquity in our hearts that it has caused us to, to God to turn it back on us. Or we turn our back on God is taken away and my sin is purged. See, when we, when we allow the Holy Spirit to purge us, he takes away our iniquity and our sins is blotted out. That we can stand before God as a child that has surrendered to his will, to his purpose, to his plan. See, God has a will. He has a purpose. He has a plan for your life. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? Because you see, if you don't understand, see, this is why, this is why the church is not full today. Because of the message that God's given me to preach. But that's okay. God said, God said, don't look at the things which you're seeing because these things are temporal. They're going to change. These things are temporal, they're going to change. But notice what he said, verse number, verse number seven again. And he and, and he and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me and I'll go. When God showed me this passage of scripture, I was in so much darkness that when I laid my head down on my pillow, see I meditate, I read verse number 1 through 8 over and over and over and over and over and over. I meditated upon it. Amen. And then one day, I laid my head on my pillow then all of a sudden, I'm in outer darkness. I mean, so black, you can take a, 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 a knife and you can cut it with so thick. Darkness so thick. I was in that darkness. And off from my right, way off from my right, there was a bright light going back and forth. See, God is looking for someone who he can show himself strong through. God is looking for someone who will yield to his will, to his purpose, to his plan. God is looking for someone that will truly repent and give his heart to him. God is looking for someone that is not ashamed of the gospel. God is looking for someone that he can love on, someone that he can spend time with, someone he can communicate with, someone that will say, Lord, here am I. Send me. I'll go. The light going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then all of a sudden, it, it will get so close, getting so close, and I'm asleep. I'm in a vision. I'm, in, I'm asleep. Amen. And it came so close, and all of a sudden, it comes and shine right down upon me. It was so bright, so powerful, I had to cover my eyes like this. Even when I was asleep, I did it in the natural. And when I woke up out of this, my whole attitude had changed. Why? Because my iniquity was taken away. And my sin was purged. That's when I begin to experience God's anointing like I have never experienced before. I, I will go, I, I will go to the people who ask me to come do special meeting for them in the you know, departments. They have these ballrooms where they can have, have gatherings and stuff. They used to start having these ballrooms, these gatherings and stuff. They asked me to come and preach. Because that's the only place I preach. I could the church wouldn't let me come. But they would start asking me to come to these special places to, to preach. And I was in there preaching, and all, and, and I'm, I, I said, now I'm going to pray for the sick. And I, everybody, I said, everybody in the book prayer, just stand up and let me, and I started praying for them. And I seen a deaf ear open. My first time. I'm praying for everyone. And I get to this little boy, and I lay my hands on his head and begin to pray. He, start, he started screaming. And I said, what's the problem? And the mother said, he have ear aids on. He can't hear. 
And when you put your hand, you cover the signal and it's sending out a loud signal through his head. I said, take him out. I said, take him out. They took those things out of the young boy's ear. And I laid my hands on his ear again. And I began to pray. And I said, God, in the name of Jesus, I put my finger in his ear just like this. <laughs> I said, in the name of Jesus, I command these eardrums to be opened. I command them to be healed now in Jesus' name. And then I, I did like Benny Hinn. <laughs> I said, I, I said, can you hear me now? He said, yeah. And I go back to the phone. Can you hear me now? He said, yeah. Can you hear me now? And the whole place just went in an uproar. Just went in an uproar. Why? Because the kingdom of God is being demonstrated in the earth once again. This is what God wants to do through you. He wants to demonstrate the kingdom of God in you and through you. It began to be so radical that this friend asked me to come and pray for her mother. Her mother, now this was a girl I used to like, you know. It's a, she woman asked me what I pray for a mother. I said, yeah, but I want to come over there and do it. Why? Because I wanted to see her. <laughs> I wanted to see her. She said, you can pray on the phone. I said, no, I want to come over there. And so as I started over to her house, my car has never run hot before. All the times I've had this car, never ran hot. The car ran hot twice on the way there. And I stopped at the gas station, cooled it off, put water in, cooled it off, and I started again. It went hot again. Now, on the way back, it didn't get hot at all. The devil didn't want me to go there. I went to pray for this woman, and she. Now I, I said, "Now, before I pray for you, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna minister to you first. So I ministered to this woman. I just gave her a few. I exalted her in the word of God, and I said, "Now I'm gonna pray for you." And when I laid my hands on this woman and prayed for her, the power of God hit this woman. And I said, now go back to the doctor and see what they're going to say. She went back to the doctor, and the doctor, she had a hole in her heart, and it was enlarging. They said, the hole is almost closed. What happened? Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. That's what the doctor told her. And the woman lived a few more, I don't know how many more years after that. Amen. Amen. And there was times when I prayed for people, and cancer just dropped, went right out of people. Went right out of people. Amen. And I'm talking to this woman and I, I'm praying with this woman. Then all of a sudden I hear ligament. I hear ligament in my spirit. Ligament. And I and this woman was a nurse. I said, what is a ligament? And, and, she, and she said, ligament is what the doctors call breast cancer. It's a something breast cancer. And I said, this is what God is saying to me about you. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke this ligament. I command it to leave you right now in the name of Jesus, and then it will never come again. Oh, this woman raised her hand, began to receive this prayer. And I'm telling you what, she was so happy because she had lumps and stuff in her breast, and all of a sudden it's gone. Woo! When you start to allow the kingdom of God to manifest in you and through you, you begin to show people that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why it's so important to repent. That's why God has called the church to repent. Because it's time to demonstrate the kingdom of God. In these, in, in, starting next year, you're going to see the churches that are taking heed to the, what, God, what the Spirit of God is saying. They're going to start demonstrating the kingdom of God like they've never done before. And you are going to be a part of that because God's going to use you. God's going to use you. You too. He's going to use you. He's going to use you. He's going to demonstrate his kingdom through you. And you that are with me by the internet, get ready because God is getting serious now. As his people begin to repent, you're going to begin to experience God's presence like you never experienced before. And there's going to be a peace that's a pass of all understanding that's going to begin to rest upon your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> your whole atmosphere around you is going to become electrified with the presence of God. How shall I my time? And you're going to begin to see people healed delivered and set free. Why? Because you
made yourself available. Because you realize that God was dealing with your heart. If my people, which are called by my name, 2 Chronicles chapter 4, verse, chapter 7, verse 14, will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. God want to bring restoration to the body of Christ so that the body of Christ can begin to be the church that God created to be that the kingdom of God will manifest in this hour that we are in to the world. This is what God is doing. That's why I've been preaching on sin all year. Now, these last two months, God had me preach repentance. Why? Because he's, he's, he, he, he's looking for the people that are going, that's going to be sincere. He's looking for the people that are, being, that are, that are going to truly repent. And, going to, and, and he's going to begin to empower them. He's going to begin to pour out a freshness of his presence upon them. And there's going to be an awakening on the inside of them. There's a power of God on the inside of you that the world has never seen and that's going to be released and it's going to, it's going to come forth as a rivers of living water into the lives and the souls of those that are continually around you and they're going to begin to experience change. And a lot of times, you're not going to have to do anything. But when God tells you to pray for him, you pray. If you don't tell you to pray, just, just walk in his presence and let his presence do the work. Yes, let his presence do the work. Because you see, when the child of God comes in the presence of God, the people that are living in sin come under conviction of God. And then they're going to begin to cry out. What have I to do with thee? You come to torment me before the time? Then you're going to be able to say, come out of him. Now, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Come out! And torment this child no more. Wow. Did I make any sense to anybody today? Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, it really, it really, it really spoke to my heart. My time is about up. I still got what? 13 minutes. But I got five more minutes to preach. Only five more minutes to preach. You see, when God showed me in Isaiah this bright light, when it comes shine upon me, my whole life took on a new meaning. And God is ready to do something in your heart right now. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 about to come alive in you. Those of you that are truly saying, God, I see the areas of my life that I need help, and I'm asking you to help. And I can't, I tried doing it myself, I can't do it, and I keep making mistakes. God, help me. Then all of a sudden, when God began to help you, the Spirit of the Lord is going to begin to rest upon you like you've never experienced before. Then you're going to begin to, you're going to begin to experience a desire. To minister to people. Because you want to set the captives free. Yes. You want to set the captives free. Amen. Because of the spirit of the Lord. It's going to be upon you. And that what he said. Yeah. Oh I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. Whew. Look at the atmosphere right now. It's starting to be electrified. By the presence of almighty God. The angels of God is here today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now you can say this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's your declaration. You can speak it over your life. Because it's true. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. <coughs> so 
support you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now you can begin to walk like Jesus. Look at Colossians chapter 3, chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. In the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse number 6. This is where you're at right now. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, notice what it said now, so walk ye in him. Now that's powerful. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Notice what it said, verse number 7. Rooted, built up in him, established in faith, as ye have therefore received, as ye have therefore been taught, abiding therein with thanksgiving. See, God has given you what you need to, under, to carry you through the walk in the, in, the, in the place in your life where you can experience his goodness and his mercy like you've never experienced before. See, God knows exactly how to get you to that place where your heart will be so in tune, so open to him that you'll be, you just like a, you just like a sponge. Every time he opens his mouth, he, you're going to hear what he, you, you're gonna, your ears going to be so open that you will hear what he has to say. I'm talking about your spiritual ears. I'm not talking about these natural ears because the, the devil, he's going to start throwing these fire dots. He's going to start throwing these fire dots. That's why, that's why he tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, find my brother, be strong in the Lord. See, you can't work this, what I'm telling you, in the natural. You can't work it in your own strength. you got to allow him to work it in you and through you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. They said, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your Lord, girl about with truth. You got to know the truth of who you are. See, as long as you don't know the truth of who you are, you're going to be dominated by the kingdom of darkness. But the moment you begin to understand who you are, that light that you're going to begin to walk in is going to override the darkness that's coming against you. It's just like, just like when you turn the light switch on in a dark room, the darkness flees. That's what's going to happen in your heart. Once, once you begin to realize who you are, it's just like a switch. The light switch is coming on in your heart. And all the darkness has been tormenting you. All the darkness has been beating against your mind, will, your emotion. All of a sudden, that darkness is going to flee. Why? Because the light just come on. The truth is the light. And it's the truth that's going to make you free. If ye are my disciples indeed, you shall continue in my word. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Yes, the truth shall make you free. Kashi <laughs> And there are those that are among you, they even those that are watching by the by the electronics will hear this word, and they will hear by the spirit, and they will too come to know you by the spirit. And they shall not walk by the flesh, but they shall walk by the Spirit. And I will reveal to their hearts who they are. And I will cause them to walk in the light. For I've called them out of darkness into the light. And I will reveal my strength in these last days. For I will demonstrate my kingdom. Right before their very face. And they will know that it's not a myth. They will know that it's not of darkness. For I will cause them to be the voice that I have set in motion. And as they walk with me and as they talk with me. I will bring them to understand that I have given them not just a voice. But I have given them the keys to the land. And as they understand and as they begin to flow, they will also begin to know 
that I am with them, never to leave them, nor to forsake them. For I am the door. So enter in. Enter in and know that I am God. Enter in and know that I am God. Oh yeah. Thank you Lord. 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 For without me, you can't do nothing. Amen. Said the Lord. Mm. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank you. I see the glory of God all in this place right now. It's foggy in this place right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God, I bless your name. I bless your name, Father. I thank you for what you've done today, Father, in our hearts. I thank you for the encouraging words that you have spoken by the power of your spirit. I thank you, Father, for opening up our eyes of understanding that we will know what is the hope of your calling in our life. We will begin to see ourselves as you see us, Father. We are not beat down. We're not being trampled upon by the works of darkness. We're not worms crawling on the ground, but we are your children and the sheep of your pastors. We are mighty men and women of God. We are walking by faith and not by sight. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. God, you have given us the ability to walk before you and to allow you to be seen in us. Oh God, demonstrate your glory. Demonstrate your strength. Let the world see that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, oh, God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth, in our lives, in the church, as it is in heaven. And we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Well, it's time for us to prepare our, evening, our morning offering. I'm saying evening. I'm thanking this. Oh, my God. I'm so caught up in the spirit right now. But it's time for us to prepare our offering for the day. Amen. Those of you that want to sow your seed by the internet, you can go to my website, libraryministries.com. Amen. You can plant your seed. Amen. Or if you want to sow your seed through the Cash App, you can also use the Cash App. Amen. Just type my name, Larry Bergens, there in Cash App. You'll see me up there with a military baseball cap on. Amen. You can plant your seed that way. Or you can use your PayPal account. And you can just type the name, Pastor Labyrinth, in PayPal, and you can sow your seed that way. Amen. But whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. And also, we are, we are preparing to go back to the mission field in, in a few months. Amen. And we are asking that those of you that can and will, amen, to help us. Because uh, I believe that the moment you agree to help us, the anointing that we're going to be operating in, Amen. As a messenger of Christ, it's going to begin to rest upon you. Amen. And upon your loved ones. Glory to God. Amen. And as we take the message of, of healing and deliverance there, amen, and salvation there, we, uh, those of you that, that, that help us out, I believe that you and your family also will begin to experience salvation, healing, and deliverance here in America. Amen. Those of you that support this work, you're not supporting man, you're supporting the work of God for souls. Amen. For souls. So sow your seed. Amen. And, and as God's will, we will uh, keep you updated because the reason why we didn't go in November like we was intended to go because the things that was happening in Jerusalem. Amen. And, there, and it, was, it started an uproar around, around the world. But now it's beginning to level out, and God just spoke to my heart the beginning of this year, uh, uh, the beginning of this month, December. He said, I want you to prepare to go. And so we are, we are setting everything back in motion once again, amen, to go. And like I told you before, the budget is halfway met right now, and we could definitely use your support. And every little bit helps, amen. I don't care what, how significant, how little, or how much. 
Every dollar has a face on it. And every face is represents someone on that field that's going to be out on that ministry field this spring. Just think. Your contribution can make the difference of someone going to heaven or hell. Someone being healed or continuing to walk around sick. Your contribution is so much needed right now that I believe that we're going to see one of the greatest harvests of souls that we've ever seen. Because God has given me, he's given me a fresh outlook on what's going to take place over there. He said, I'm, you're going, but not just to do a crusade, you're going as my messenger. My messenger. That's a difference. See, I'm going at his command, not at my command. As a messenger. Amen. So whatever you do to help us out, I believe that God will show, God will show up on your behalf. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children all across the land. Everyone that's watching by the internet and everyone that will see it later, Lord God, I pray for them also, Lord, that as they see this message, as they experience the presence of your spirit on this message, Lord God, they will also experience the anointing, Father, to deliver them and to set them free from the spirit of poverty and disease. Father, I release that anointing now by faith in Jesus' name. I release that anointing now in Jesus' name. And Father, whatever you do, we'll give you all the glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, if you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or uh, maybe you have made him the Lord of your life, but some point in your, some part, somewhere in your life, you backslid, and you said, Pastor, I want to rededicate my life to God. I want to get my life back on the right track. Or maybe you said, Pastor, I've never given my heart to the Lord. I've always heard it, but I've never really, I never really did it because I realized I thought I thought I might have plenty of time. And you know, time, it goes so fast. You may, your time may run out before you even get there. Amen. So I want to encourage you right now to invite Jesus Christ into your heart and allow the light of the gospel to bring a transformation in your heart like you've never experienced before. And if that's you, you want to, you, you want your heart right with God, or you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, amen, then I want you to say this prayer with me right now. Whether you're here in the building, or whether you're with me by the internet, or whether you listen to it later on, either way, God is going to answer your request. If you say, Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sin come to my heart. If that's you, I want you to say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And that you died for my sin. Today, I confess my sin. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Those of you that said that prayer right now, the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of you. Amen. And let me tell you something. The seraphim right now that I, we read about in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, the seraphim is going to visit you with a hot coal. He's going to lay it upon your mouth. Your iniquities shall be taken away and your sin purged. And you're going to stand before God as a holy man, a woman of God. And get ready. Because God is going to begin to speak to you. He's going to begin to deal with your heart. He's going to begin to draw you closer. And when he do this, just yield. How do you know when it's going to happen? When your mind starts coming under attack with different thoughts. When people start to fight against you, that showed me that showed me that, that God was drawing me closer. Amen. Because I began to experience opposition. See, when I start experiencing opposition, that means I've been accepted <laughs> by the king. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all get anything out of this today? Yes. 
Amen, amen. I'm so glad you all came today. Amen. Anybody need special prayer right now, I'll pray for you right now. If you want me to pray for you, I'll pray for you right now. Glory to God. What happened to you this time? Um, he didn't hit you, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I know he didn't. <laughs> I heard it um, since 1998. And, um, the carpet uh, Yeah, and the doctor said that my, um, my neck is uh, really neck? terrible, really hurt. And, okay. And, uh, let's, uh, let's release all this to God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every demonic attack against her health. I cancel every argumentative spirit that will try to interfere with her health. Father, I release divine health from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I speak to every organ of her body. I speak to every limb. I speak to every muscle. I speak to every nerve. I speak to every joint in the name of Jesus. Be healed! Be healed now in Jesus' name. Oh, she love our kind. Oh, she love our kind. There go the power right now. Receive it. There it is. In Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you. And I praise you for it. Wow. Wow. Your whole complexion changed that fast. By the power of God. Walk in that strength. Thank you, Jesus. You healed. Okay, amen. Anyone else? Yeah. Come on, Brother Keith. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I speak to the colon. I rebuke every demonic attack against his colon. I cancel in the spiritual realm everything God that has risen up in his colon that will come against his health that was that was, that was not placed there by you I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus I break in the spirit every cancerous cell right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. Be healed now. In Jesus' name. Oh, shit out of my clothes. Shut out of my Oh, shit. Mmm. Woo. That was powerful. Oh, my God. Anyone else? You know, that was a young man that was coming to this church. He had colon issues. So much to the point that his colon burst on the inside of him and his bowel went all throughout his body. He was at the point of death. And he asked me to be his spokesman to the doctors for his medical decisions. He was therefore gone. And I began to watch over him through prayer. This was just a month ago. A month, it was less than a month ago, about, yeah. about, about four, about five, about, about three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago. Oh. No, he was in the hospital for two weeks. Yes, yeah, so it's about a month. So it's been about a month altogether. And this is recently too. This is not just something I'm talking about. This is something that actually happened. He was at the point of death. And the doctors and the family, they didn't know what to do. So he asked me, he said, Pastor, would you be my spokesman to the doctor and help make right make right decisions for, for me that I'm because I don't I, I don't want to die right now. And I said, Yeah, if that's what you want me to do, I do. So that, that means the doctors had to consult me instead of his family what had to take place. And, and I would go there and I would pray for this man. Now, right now, he's still alive, but he have, he have a bag on him right now because he's, he's, he, he's still recovering. 
and uh, but he's still alive. And now he's back at home. See, God knows exactly how to deliver us. He knows exactly how to heal us. He knows exactly what we need. Amen. And and also, when his colon busted, they found cancer in it. They cleaned out all the cancer cells. They said they got it all out. And they put them back together. And I went there last night to visit him at his home. And he's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good. I know what God will do if we would trust him. And he want to use you the same way. Are you ready? He want to use you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you once again for all that have come today. For all that are with us by the internet. Father, I ask this in the name of Jesus. That you would show yourself strong on their behalf. Let their eyes of understanding be open, Father. That they will see themselves as you see them. Then as they begin to see themselves as you see them. Let them walk in the ability that you have called them to walk. Let them experience your anointing and your presence. And then, Father... Let them have a let them fall in love with you all over again. So they will never turn away from you. I bless your people, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to join us tonight. We'll be back here tonight at 6:30. Amen. We have a powerful service prepared for you for tonight. And I believe that your life will no longer be the same. After you spend some time in the presence of the Lord. Join us tonight and you'll see what I'm talking about. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry saying have a good day. We'll see you tonight at 6.30. Bye-bye.